All right, Gibby, tell me what's going on here. Who is this? So <laughs> this is the Cyclops. Yeah. Uh, and it was uh, an amalgamation of their ideas and just, just drawing di different concepts out and it just ended up being this thing. So did you get actual design drawings or did you get sort of more gestural and Boy. inspiration drawings? I think it was words. Words, okay. I think I got and, words. And so this is, uh, if I'm correct, uh, from what I understand, this is additively built. Like this yep. wasn't a, a sculpt and then molded. This no. is, you, you sort of had the charge to just make this from scratch. Yeah, that was the majority of the puppets for this thing were just all uh, what you call build-up puppets. Okay. So it, we start with this thing, and then we just start gluing things to it to get the shape, and then we make skins. I had never done one cradle to grave like this before. Really? Yeah. So this was kind of taking it from that all the way to this first time for this with this guy, and yeah. then did it with a couple others, and it was a blast, and it was. <laughs> it was so much fun doing it that way. <laughs> All right, so let's let's start from the inside out. I, I we've shown one of these in the past. I think when we visited Peter Jackson's collection, we saw the King Kong King Kong armature, and this is your animation armature. This is the meat and bones. Of yeah, we would start with something like this. We were honestly just going to do wire. Oh, okay. But we have so many armatures in the studio that right. it's just kind of like it'd be easier to start with a skeleton, which is inside this one. So yeah. This is what we start with. So for you guys, this is like Tinker Toys. You have drawers yeah. full of these balls and sockets. Yeah, and that's how, yeah. yeah. That's how we got to the designs in a way, was that we just, we kit bashed our own kit bashes. Now, I know that different animators like different amounts of tension on mm -hmm. their joints. Do you yep. tend to like a heavy or a light feel? I prefer as light as I can get it so that I don't have to lean into the puppet to move it. Right. Because when you apply as, a whole lot of force, yeah. then you can move things you have to correct again. Right. So, yeah, it, and d depending on the shot, you'll tune for the shot. Right, and now, now, in the normal course of things, how do you end up covering an armature like this on a normal, like, regular stop motion shoot? Well, the, the things that we use now don't decay or rust the armatures as bad as they used to in the old days. Okay. But we would typically just wrap all this in cellophane mm -hmm. or in uh, uh, Teflon tape. And yeah. then we just start literally gluing things to it. Like we'd wrap it in foam, glue that down. That's what this guy is. He was just layers and layers of foam. And then when I realized it was going too slow, I literally just started ripping blocks of foam. Oh, wow. Like out of sofa cushions. Yeah, Not yeah. literally, but yeah. basically that. Open and then just, cell. Yeah, and then just gluing thing. that on there and then doing more wraps and stuff to get the shape. Now, when you're doing that kind of additive building, I would assume you need a little more uh, uh, tension on these yeah. to be able to move that material around. Is that yeah. a challenge? Yes. And that became a, that was one of my learning curves on this, <laughs> <laughs> was that he's really fat. Yeah. So I ended up putting so much foam in here and around the arms that the armature couldn't be tightened enough. You'd tighten it and you'd move it and then just go burp. And the, the foam would drag right. it back. Right. Wow. So, so at that point, I asked Phil about it and I said, can you go in later and just like do an operation where you just cut it open and then just reach in there and just start ripping organs out? And he's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> so I literally I cut them apart and I went inside and I pulled foam back out. Amazing. And then glued it back together. It held the shape because yeah. it had all been put together as a fat boy. Right. And it worked. And they, then the armature could get a little, little more delicate at that point. Well, and I think that most people don't realize that you're also often tensioning and retensioning on set mid animation sometimes yeah. with some, some of these joints. So you have to have an internal mental picture of this armature in order to be yeah. able to know where to stick an Allen wrench, right? Oh my Lord, yeah. And so <laughs> in the proper way of doing this is you, you, know, you put your armature out and you yeah. just take photographs of it. So that you can you remember references. like where, ah. and then you pose it and you'll take photographs again. So you'll know if the screw that you need to tighten is facing up or facing oh, down. Wow. Well and betide I you if you got it wrong. Every, oh, you just cut the puppet apart till you find <laughs> the bolt, which is what I did a lot of. Yeah. I would just be like, I swear to God, it was there. And I'd be just cut, 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 peel it back like banana skins and then like find it and go, all right, and then tighten it and then just glue everything back. And then you're, again. for the next frame, you're just making sure there's no flashing there. Yeah. 
The thing, <laughs> I forgot to say this at the beginning when we were talking about the skeleton, but the thing I love this about the armature skeletons is that Willis O'Brien solved this problem in the 30s and we're still doing precisely what he solved. Yeah, I know, it's amazing. And the only thing that's really changed is the hammer is, it's a bit better hammer. The guys that make these now, yeah. like the old ones, they're, they still work. They do their job. Yeah. But the guys that make these now make them so smooth. Like okay. the like the entire joint is when you tighten it, yeah. To take three pounds of pressure to move it, it will move all the way through its cycle wow. off of that pressure. As opposed to slightly sloppier or more rusted type armatures that aren't made with cold rolled steel or stainless see, and that sort right. of stuff. So they're well, they'll Bind. They'll have little. And you just have to lean yeah. into it a little harder, or they just let go, and they're just like, rrr, 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 and you got to tighten it and back I, up again. I remember but adjusting. These are amazing. I remember adjusting an armature for an animator back in the '90s, where it was there were multiple levels of tightness, so that he could grab a hand yep. and the arm would move with it in the way that he wanted. That's a whole thing. Yeah, and you that some people do that, and it works great if you don't have a whole lot of junk. Right. Well, I mean, I guess a lot of the time, uh, this is covered with something like a, a, a SRAM, a makeup sponge, mm -hmm. something very lightweight. <sighs> uh, <laughs> you wish you'd had that. I love that stuff. <laughs> I love that stuff. But the problem is that's the stuff that rusts these things. Yeah. And also it falls apart really fast. Yeah. It wears out so yeah. that things start to crack and peel. And yeah. So talk to me about animating this. You did all of this buildup and this, I see kit, I see oh, every yeah. technique and model making here. Yep. Kit bashing, build up, molding, casting, painting. Uh, how was it to animate him on set? How many? You're moving a whole bunch of him each time. The really cool thing when you build the puppet, you can actually you know the what you want it to do. Yeah. So I could architect where these all these pieces went, so they wouldn't get in my way. That's so that really was nice. I know, and it took a lot bec because the plates, especially on his legs, yeah, would he wouldn't want to crush down. And so, but I just sat there and tweaked them and I would carve them with, uh, carve away stuff with uh, uh, sandpaper and yeah. razor blades until I, I could get a uh, crouch from, I don't even know what these came from. <laughs> we found some like, <laughs> we were just finding stuff either in the shop or online for yeah. like 30 bucks. And we just yeah. felt like, oh, let's just buy that. And I'd get pieces of armor. I think these are off of like a Barbie or some <laughs> uh, Xena warrior princess thing. And they're all pink and sparkly and stuff. That's a nice luxury. <laughs> it's a nice luxury as an animator to yeah. be able to build this. Cause I'm yeah. sure that you've gotten things to animate in the past that you didn't build and oh. you had to yeah. do a lot of problem solving around. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, and totally. it's, it's not that common that animators can build their own full armature build outs, is it? No, it's, um, yeah, it isn't that common. I mean, some people do it, not many. But and like, especially for a job like this, I imagine it makes you extra valuable because you don't have this disconnect in the pipeline. You are taking the yeah. concept and taking it all the way to execution. Yeah. Um, was there a particular part about animating him that, that gave you trouble or that surprised you when you were on set? The the thing that is his his biggest weakness is just his torso because he's so fat and so he's you got can't so really, much material. Yeah, to move you just between. can't really get him to bend over properly, but it, or the way that you would want to, right? The right. way that I in my head saw it, but you just worked around it. He's bent over fine for the shot. He came right into the lens and did what he needed to do. But yeah, that was a bit of a pain. Everything else was it was really fun. Dude, the worst part was probably. These hands yeah. are just mech hands off a model we found. <laughs> and when we got it back from the set, so many people had played with it, the fingers were just falling out of it. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. I was wondering and about was, them coming back from set as yeah. set dressing. So did you have to replace the hands? No, I just figured out how to heat the plastic and then just kind of repinch the joints so that the, and, and then, you know, spit on it so it would cool <laughs> really quickly. And then I could get the finger to be back in there and still work. So you, were you there with a little heat gun and? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because it's just all plastic. So. They are really fun to play with. In people's oh. defense, the, these are oh. so much fun to manipulate. Yeah, and what's crazy is toys are made so well these days, you can actually animate toys, which is so much fun. Oh man. Yeah, and I mean, it's plastic. <laughs> That's oh, wow. plastic. You've just and got a I little... just Yeah, I just, I just drill it and tap it as if, as if it was metal. And, and because just these build up, that screw doesn't interrupt the aesthetics at all. Not at all. That's what's great about it. 
<laughs> well, I mean, that's sort of the aesthetic of Mad God is that the materials of construction are sort of extant in the aesthetics. It's, yeah, I think that they sort of wanted that feel, that look. Yeah. Uh, for all of these things. And it's, it's a technique we've all gotten pretty good at. at this so point, once, hundreds of puppets. once you had him on set, how many days did you spend animating him? <laughs> you want, sorry, one, two, one, one. Yeah, it was <laughs> ridiculous. Really it was fast. like months of work and then the performance is just one shot, five seconds of yeah, yeah. animation. I did in like a day and a half or something. Um, I want to pay you, uh, really, the highest compliment for your rust work, man. Oh, really? Dude, the, the variegation on, the, on, the, on the, the light and the dark rust, are you using clay powders for that? It is, it's a paint that has either copper filings in it or iron filings. Right, and then you, and then you get, put an acid on it. And and oh, so it's, actual, it it's, a, it's actually physical rust. Oh, yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And then you can, I, uh, as a painter, I, I can make paint that looks like rust yeah. out of acrylic and sand and yeah. other things. So if I needed to tailor it a bit more, I gotcha. could tailor it with just paint. Dude, he is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and he comes across really well in the show. <laughs> Feels like I'm watching Mad God. Yeah, I think that is, uh, that's why they wanted Phil. That's yeah. why the, you know, it was the show it was. Oh, and I also love the fact that I can see, right, these are the heavy joints because they yeah. have to deal with the most, yep. medium, and then the lightest. Uh, it's yeah, I wish I could show you his insides. This is just something that's similar. This is a rough mock-up. But yeah, are... but it's the, it's the same concept. It's, yeah. These yeah. spine joints, are they can so if you hold had a to, lot of weight. So if you had to do this again, might you add a second line here to give more compressibility in the... <sighs> if I had to do it again, I think his... His waist is not, or his his spine is not as robust. It's got this. This has got four bowls mm -hmm. in it, and I think he's got two. Gotcha. Right in the middle. Okay. So he doesn't naturally bend a lot anyway. Yeah. Um. But I would hog way more foam out of the middle of him Fair next enough. time because by the time I got the skins on and everything else, it stiffened him back up again. I right. Like, right. Ah. Right. <laughs> you know, live and learn, dude. Yeah. The really fun part was like finding this fur. Yeah. Which uh, I think, um, uh, oh, my friend, John Berg. Oh, okay. Gave, gave me, he had a bunch of fur and it was really long and it, we figured out how to dye it. And because I wanted, you know, I, I wanted like little long crunch hairs. Yo, I love that you got stuff. some butt crack going oh, on. Oh, I well. know. It was so much fun. <laughs> Making that butt was like the best part. And nobody ever got to see the butt. <laughs> now but I, now yeah. they get to see yeah, the there butt. You go. Yeah. There you go. You're welcome, <laughs> I, everybody. I know it's there. That's what's important. <laughs> But it was a lot of fun making the fur. It was inspired by, of course, the um, the Cyclops in the... Of course, from in, Sinbad. Yes, yeah. it was like... I recognized I loved, it right away. Yeah, that was my inspiration on this a lot because I fucking... That was my favorite character when I was a kid. That yeah. and the Talos. Talos. I was just watching that scene the other the, day on YouTube just to kind of put it back into my head. I just saw it again like a month ago. I don't even know why. The it sound the sound of the scraping yeah. bronze when he turns his head. <sighs> so speaking of that, given that that's one of yeah. our earliest inspirations, did doing this kind of bring you back to the origins of what you loved oh. about animating? Yeah. Yeah, making monsters uh, and behemoths or whatever and then getting to animate them. Like Mad God was just 10 years of just getting to relive my childhood every weekend. <laughs> and the only thing that was different was that like Phil would put razor blades and <laughs> rusted needles into the puppets. So yeah. you just went, it's like toys. <laughs> you just, you'd just be a mess, you'd be bleeding <laughs> everywhere. Well, dude, thank you so much for walking me through this. It's a yeah. really, really beautiful execution and it comes off great in the show. I can't wait to see it. That's good. All right, I need to know where you find this tiny little split loom because that is awesome stuff.